All right, so today I want to talk to you guys about the metric system. And we're going to use liters here as our example. And for each one of these, it goes up by a power of 10 each time. You multiply it by 10 each time. So there would be 10 milliliters in a centiliter, 10 centiliters in a deciliter, and 10 deciliters in a liter. And the same thing here. If you took one liter, you could divide that into 10 deciliters, or 100 centiliters, or 1,000 milliliters. And the reason that scientists like to use the metric system is that it makes it really easy to go from one unit to another. You don't have to worry about converting ounces to gallons or pints like you do in the imperial system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a poster to show you guys what the metric system is all about and how to convert from one to the other. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the three main types of the units that we use in the metric system. They have to do with distance, volume, and mass. So we have distance, volume, and mass. Now distance, I typically think of, let's change up the colors here just to make things a little bit more interesting. Distance, I think about rulers. How far it is from one thing to another. So that would be distance. So in the United States, how do we measure distance? Metric system? No. no. We tried to in the 70s, but it failed. Miles? Miles, what else? How else do we measure? In? Chains? No. Feet. feet, yeah, feet and miles. Feet and miles. In the metric system, How do we measure distance? Kilometers. Meters and kilometers, yeah. Meters and kilometers. A meter is a little bit longer than three feet. So it's about three feet. And a kilometer is six tenths of a mile, or about two thirds of a mile ish. This isn't exact. OK, so that's how long a kilometer is. There's also a centimeter. And that is about how wide your finger is. So if you have a fingernail here, and you have your knuckles, maybe a little hair coming off the knuckles, a centimeter is about how wide your finger is. And then there's a millimeter. And a millimeter is the width of a dime. Hey, guys in the back, you see that? A millimeter is about the width of a dime. Very, 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 very thin. It's like as wide as, maybe even not even as wide as that line right there. So that's distance. That's how big distances are in the metric system. So now, let's move on to volume. So in volume, first we're going to talk about cubic volume. because sometimes we talk about liquid volume and that's a little different. But in cubic volume, in the United States, how do we talk about cubes like this? Units. What, units are we, what, what units do we use? Is it, uh, length, width, height? length times width times height gets you a cube, so cubic... Inches? Cubic inches could be one, but I typically think of cubic, cubic feet. So I usually think of cubic feet. Or sometimes it's just uh, feet, and then you have a three superscript, a feet cubed. Okay, so like uh, maybe your refrigerator at home is like uh, 20 cubic feet. Okay, in the metric system, how do you think they do it in the metric system? Well, they do it in multiple 10, yeah, but they just do it in cubic meters or centimeters. So cubic meters or centimeters. 
basically any distance that you can think of, they do it in a cube. And that's how they do it for uh, rectangular or square or cubic objects in the metric system. Now, then we have liquids. Let's say we have a can of soda. Anyone know how many ounces a can of soda is? I, heard, I thought I heard somebody say it. Yeah, 12 ounces. So in the US, we're going to use ounces but we can also use pints, quarts, gallons, teaspoons, tablespoons. In fact, it got so confusing that I had to print out a chart for myself and for my wife at home. Like, here's three tablespoons equals a quarter cup. A quarter cup, you know, equals 17 micros. I mean, it's, it's just kind of ridiculous. This is why I really like the metric system for science. It makes things a whole lot easier. Okay, in the metric system, when they're measuring liquids, they use liters or milliliters. So again, they use liters. This is one liter right here. They also use milliliters. These are really small little units. And then uh, a kiloliter, a thousand liters would be enough to fill up like a small hot tub or a refrigerator. That's about a thousand liters right there. All right. Finally, let's move on to mass. And for mass, I'm going to draw a big old barbell here. Like you'd see at the gym, one that I could never lift because I'm kind of weak. So you have mass here. Now, mass and weight are very similar. And I'm going to later in the year kind of differentiate a little bit for you, kind of help you understand the difference between mass and weight. But for right now, we're just going to pretend they're the same thing. So in the United States, how do we measure mass or weight? Pounds. Yeah, pounds or tons. So pounds or tons. And how many pounds is a ton? Aiden? 2,000, 2000 yeah. So in the metric system, They measure mass in grams or kilograms. Now, a gram weighs about the same as a dollar bill. So this is about a gram. The weight of this is about a gram. If you chop this up into a thousand pieces, that would be a milligram. Okay, so like when you hear about medicine like having um, 40 milligrams or 80 milligrams of aspirin or something like that, that's what they're talking about. A milligram would be if you chop this up into a thousand different little pieces. So a gram is like a one dollar bill. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So it's a little more than two, uh, two pounds. And a milligram is very, 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 very small. It's like a, it's like a, like a, like a speck of, like a grain of sand, let's say. Very, very small. Now here's the thing. We have to eventually convert between these units. And when we convert, there's two important questions we have to ask ourselves. First, we have to ask ourselves, is the unit sometimes it's helpful to think of the unit as the container. So I'll put container in here. So is the unit or the container getting bigger or smaller? And then the second question you need to ask yourself is, how many spots do I move? And that'll make more sense here in a minute. How many spots do I move? 
And so there's seven basic units we're going to be concerned with in the metric system. And I'm going to draw squares for each one of them. So bear with me for just a moment. Sorry, my squares aren't exactly perfect. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so in the middle one here are our basic units. This is where we have meters, liters, and grams. So this is kind of like our center point right here, this square here. And then starting up at the top, this is where you get your biggest units. So I'm going to draw like a really big container up here, like a really big pitcher of water. So this is where the real big pitcher of water is. And then down here is where we have the little tiny little pitcher of water. Okay, so the units up here are big, the units over here are small. So we have kilo, and just to make sure that I'm spelling these right, hecto, deca, and then our regular units, and then deci, centi, and milli. And so, if I go from milliliters to kiloliters, is my unit or my container getting bigger or smaller? If I go from milliliters to liters, is my container getting bigger or smaller? From here to here. It's getting bigger, yeah. If I have bigger containers, is it going to take more scoops or less scoops to get the same amount of water out? Okay, so think about it like this. Let's say I have a huge bucket of water right here that I have to get out. If you're scooping out a big old bucket of water over and over again, is it going to be easier to scoop it out using this or this? The big one. The big one, exactly. It doesn't take as many, right? That's why we convert. So that way, instead of saying, hey, guess how many milliliters there are in this Olympic swimming pool? 27.392 billion. We can, say, we can say instead, you know, there are so many kiloliters. There's 20 kiloliters of water in there or something like that. I don't know exactly how big an Olympic swimming pool is. So the reason we switch through these is so it makes it easier for us to talk about these different measurements. So let's take a sticky note as soon as I can find one. There they are. So let's say that we had... Uh, four, let's say we had four decimeters. Uh, somebody give me a different unit. Aiden. Hecto. So we want to go to hectometers. Okay, first, is the container going to get bigger or smaller? It's going to get bigger. Okay, so are we going to need more containers or less containers? If we're emptying out, if we make it bigger, are we going to need more or less of them? Not more. Oh, wait, less. We're going to need less of them. And then how many spots are we going to move? One, two, three. OK, so our containers are getting smaller, which means we need less of them. And we're going to be moving that decimal point three spots to the left. One, two, three. So one, two, three. So we have zero, zero, four hectometers. And that's the same thing as four decimeters. It's the exact same amount of water. It's the same size bucket of water. The only difference is, is we're scooping out with different size containers. This making sense so far? Yeah. Okay, let's do one more. Let's say we have five decameters, and I want to go to millimeters. Okay, are my containers going to get bigger or smaller? Is my container going to get bigger or smaller? Smaller. So if they're smaller, are we going to need less of them or more of them? More of them, right. How many more? One, two, three, four. We move that decimal point four spots to the right. One, two, 
three, four. So it's five decameters is the same thing as 50,000 millimeters. Questions? All right. Thank you very much. Go ahead and stop.